You're listening to the Nintendo Powercast. Here's your hosts, N64 Josh and Destinot. What is going on? Welcome to episode 28 of the Nintendo Powercast. I'm your host, N64 Josh. I've got player two, Destinot. What's up, dude? Yo! Player three? Is it? Is it? I hate my life again? What is, what's the name this week? It's to be determined. To be We're determined. still uh, still working on that. I got some grief for being N64 hate, so I'm going to avoid that one for a little while. <laughs> You're going to have to change your Twitch name. So, uh, well, welcome, guys. I can't change it for 28 days. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Cool. You can, yeah, right, there you go. There you go. Yeah. So, uh, Ready Player One, right? Preview. Dude. Are you excited? Destiny? Huh? Yeah, a little bit. Just seven point nine percent. No, um, <laughs> seven point nine percent excited. That that book when I read it, I thought it was amazing. Uh, my brother, who doesn't read because he can't fit it into his schedule, going between Iceland, <laughs> Indonesia, and like you know wherever other place we've only seen in National Geographic. Um, I'm like, dude, you got to read this. It's like, oh, I'll check it out on my flight. You know, my next exotic destination. He like comes back and he's like, dude, that book was so good. Doesn't even tell me anything about his trip, his photographs, anything. Dude, a, but that book is amazing. Do you know he's coming out with another book? Yeah, I do. I know he's coming out with another book. Oh, dude, I got to pick that up. So he actually purchased the uh, the hardcover of Armada for me. Um, but yeah, that movie, I can't wait. I just can't wait. Yeah, hey, you pretty stoked? Yeah, love the book. Uh, it was amazing to listen to it's one of the one rare ones that i actually listened to and read because i liked it enough and um i watched the trailer there were tons of references some of them which weren't in the book so i'm interested to see the direction they take the movie in but looks good yeah yeah it'll be interesting for sure well hey guys if you would like to listen to ready player one you can go to audibletrial.com slash npc and there you can get yourself Ready Player One for free. Or choose one of 30,000 other books that you'd like. So it's it's just as simple as going to audibletrial.com slash NPC. Pick the book you want and you help support this show. After that, it's $15 a month, which isn't too bad because most books are like 25 to 30. So you get yourself one book a month that way as well. So, And it's read by Will Wheaton as, the, as Captain Logan in the chat saying. So that's audibletrial.com slash NPC. And I uh, want to give you guys a heads up. I'm going on vacation next week. So what's going to happen is there's not going to be like an official podcast. Destinot is going to be streaming on twitch.tv slash n64josh and kind of doing like, uh, like Q&A stuff. So if you guys want to come hang out and try to figure out why he's so salty, um, <laughs> come ask the, the hard questions. He's, uh, he's going to be here. For a little bit, maybe. Just a little bit. Right, Destin? Yeah, at least an hour. At least an hour to cover, like, you know, one of the shows. All right, cool. Mm-hmm. So It'll be all Destiny all the time. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Not, con- not confirmed. <laughs> there you go. So, um, and guys, we do this show live, twitch.tv slash n64josh on Tuesdays. The time may be changing. We may be doing a little bit earlier. So those of you on, like, the East Coast may actually be able to watch. So that'll be kind of fun. And... Um, but we're going to get like, we'll get all of that stuff figured out in August. So like, just, just stay tuned and we got you. Um, I do want to say real quick, everybody in the chat, sneaky sniper, captain Logan, Alka Seltzer Tini. Um, anybody else that's just hanging out. That's just kind of lurking ghetto daddy. Lurkers. Um, thank you guys for being here with us live. We appreciate it. And we have a lot to cover. There's a lot of Nintendo stuff to talk about. And a few things of, uh, there's Destinot Salt is going to flow a little bit tonight when it comes to the, the, the Nintendo Switch app. Because <laughs> why? Why? So, um, first, our pickups this week. What'd you guys pick up? That's not what you get. Uh, a little indie title called Splatoon 2. Okay. Best cool. game ever. Yeah. Ever. Anything the else? History of ever. Um. No. Okay. 
Does does the Nintendo app count as a game because it's frustrating and challenging at the same time? Maybe. No. With, uh, with less achievements no, okay. and you mm. wish you yeah, get with, a game over. With no achievements? What is this? <laughs> yeah. 2008? I guess. There were achievements in 08. Yeah, 2005. You're like 98. <laughs> yeah. 98? What? There weren't uh, achievements back then. No, you're true. You're, you're right. You're right. You're right. I think it was 2006, right? Is that when yeah. the 360 came out? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Hey, what about you? What'd you pick up this week? Uh, Splatoon, for sure. Yeah. Loving it. The first one? Terrible. What? <laughs> well, I never had it on oh. the Wii U, so I was like, might as well jump on, right? Better late than never. You're super pissed. You got home and realized it wasn't backwards compatible with your Switch. You're like, why doesn't the disc like, fit? How does this fit in here? How? I just don't what? get it. I gotta burn it onto a... What? Yeah, so I picked up Splatoon 2 as well. Um, I also picked up 8... Of the nine amiibo that came out. So rip my wallet. Um the only thing I didn't That's get a lot was, of toys to pick up. Stop with the they're they're collect they're, they're action figures. They're collectibles. They're not no. toys. I don't if I didn't flush them. the toilet for a week, would you say I've got no, collectibles? That's not the same. All That's, right. That is tomato tomato. What? Agree to disagree. That, yes, we can dis what? Uh, yeah, the only one I'm missing is the purple squid. I got everything else. And uh, they do look pretty sweet. Bayonetta, she looks awesome. I'm really, really liking them. Looks like, like something, all right. Look, you didn't get, did you get the player two? I got the player two of all of them, man. Look, there she is. If you're watching live right now, guys, you can see Bayonetta player two. Fox Except two. Leave, it wow. to, leave it to Best Buy to like put the nastiest sticker on the, <laughs> the plastic. I'm like, Really, mm. guys? Really? Anyway, not a sponsor. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that was that was my pickups, and I'm I am loving Splatoon. We're gonna get into Splatoon a little bit a little bit later. We're gonna talk about this week's releases real quick. A game called Fates coming out. You guys familiar with this one at all? Nope. Mm. So Fates. It's Dynasty Warriors shop. Esque, kind of. I don't know. It's very Japanese. I'm very intrigued by this game. Actually, I'm like, maybe I should like start giving some of these like very Japanese games a try because I typically don't. You should. So, um, I'm thinking about it. And there's another one coming out that we're going to talk about in the news section. Um, comes out early 2018. That really piqued my interest. Um. So anyway, that's uh, Fates, and the name's longer than that, but it's like Fates slash something else, and I'm not sure what it is. But uh, uh, it's a that's a retail yeah. release coming out uh, on the Switch. Metopia coming out on the 3DS, kind of an RPG, um, kind of, kind of like I don't know if you guys played any of the 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 Street Pass games, but it's kind of inspired by that basically. Um, so I would say go watch some. I know IGN's been putting up some stuff on it. So go 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 check out what they uh, what they have to say. Hey Pikmin coming out on the 3DS as well. There's also an amiibo for that game. So you know if you're if you're an amiibo hunter, don't don't miss that. Um, I enjoyed the game from the beta. I thought it was pretty good. Or I'm sorry, the demo beta. I've been saying beta a lot. So um, yeah, Captain Logan says according to IGN they like Metopia. So and listening to him this week, they did not like Hey Pikmin as much as I did, but. Hmm. Um, I can see why I can see, I can see why, especially I have not played much of the other Pikmin. So I don't, I'm not comparing it to those where most of them are comparing it to a regular Pikmin game. They're like, it's just not as good. So there you go. Um, as far as indie titles coming out and there may be more, I didn't, I didn't look it up, but I just go one off the top of my head is overcooked, which looks like a lot of fun. It does not have online multiplayer. So be aware of that, but it does have local multiplayer. And I think hmm. it's for up to four people and it looks very hectic. I hear it's a relationship ruining game. So if you're into that kind of stuff, hmm. make sure to, uh, to pick up overcooked looks, uh, it looks like a ton of fun. We're heading out on vacation. Like I, like I mentioned, so I may pick this up and, uh, be able to play with, uh, with the fam while we're, uh, while we're out in the woods in the cabin. So Captain Logan saying no online for overcooked. Yeah, did they confirm is that coming later or just not at all? I, I kind of think it's not at all, but mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know. We can we can look into it. Maybe talk about it in a couple weeks. So um 
but it looks like a super fun game. As soon as I saw it, all I wanted it was for local play. That's that was the main that was the main uh, uh, reason I was like, this looks good. So, and heard from a few people that it is as well. So, Did you pick up uh, Dad Dating Sim? No, <laughs> anyone? It was pretty high up there on uh, Twitch last week. Yeah, was uh, is that a is that a Switch exclusive? I don't think it is. Oh, okay. I don't know what it's for. I think I think it might be for a PC. I don't know. I don't think it's it for looks anybody. intriguing. Mm. Might have to make a new segment where you just play a random weird game of the week. That <laughs> I don't know if I can play that one though. <laughs> those those uh they call them visual novels, I believe. Um, yeah, no, I, I can't going do down those. a dark path. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, which is insane. It. Those those games, I read an article where they actually revitalized Steam kind of. Steam, Steam was getting stagnant and they brought in visual novels, but and Steam was like, it's not really a game. Do we want to sell this? And they decided to sell it and then sell it like hotcakes, apparently. Hmm. People like their hmm. people like their role playing, apparently. Who knew? Interesting. Interesting. Well, hey, before we jump into uh the news. Let's uh let's talk a little bit about Splatoon. Okay. So I've never played I played the beta of Splatoon 1. Mhm. Didn't hate it, but you guys have heard me say like I don't understand um why are we shooting the ground? You know, like can we just shoot each other? Isn't that more fun? After spending some time with uh with this game, I really, really like it. I like it a lot. A lot. Like it is it is extremely fun. The uh we've been I've been streaming it. We get a handful of us into our Discord chat and it's just it's like pandemonium. There's points I have to like just pull the headphone out of my ear so I can talk to my stream and everything. But the the game, like the 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 controls are tight, right? And and a lot of people that have come over from Splatoon one have said, Hey, you need to do the motion controls. And I'm like, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. It just does not feel right to play a shooter. And I think what somebody was saying is the reason the motion controls feel a little better is because there's, there's little to no aim assist when you're aiming at enemy players. And that's why you get a little more precision when you're doing motion. So I may revisit it a little bit, but I'm just not, uh, I'm I'm not sold on it yet, and because I play it, everything hard with not twin to sticks, to be able to go up and down, it, it's it's so weird for the brain. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, sneaky sniper, what's up? Thanks for joining us live, man. Welcome. Well, the nice thing about the motion controls, and I'm trying to remember if the original Splatoon was like this or not, but definitely Splatoon Two. If you set the motion controls to on, they don't automatically override your normal controls. You can still play, for example, um, I've, I've only used it with the Pro Controller, but you can use your Pro Controller and use your dual joysticks, and then if you decide you want to tilt up or down, or um, you'll, you can look left and right by not... It's, it's not tilting the controller, you actually rotate the controller, like as if you were like turning a steering wheel. Um, okay. And it'll still do the motion controls, so you can you can kind of get the best of both worlds. Then the nice thing about the motion controls versus a controller, um, with a controller, I find myself strafing more when I get into like a one-on-one battle with somebody, because if you're trying to move up and down and trying to move the joystick around to look, like you said, there's not much aim assist, so you you literally will look right past the other person. There's no, there's none of that like aim assist, like, you know, where your, your uh, crosshair stick to the other player. Um, so I find myself strafing a lot to, to win the battle, but with the motion control, the, the cool thing is you can still, like I said, use those joysticks. And if someone runs past you, I found that if you're not using motion control, it's very hard to turn on a dime and like engage that person whereas with the motion control you can literally whip those crosshairs like at a 90 degree angle very easily so it's it's more it's more of like if you've ever seen someone play a game on pc and they use a mouse to literally like 
180 degree turn like on a dime um you can do more maneuvers like that with the motion controls yeah okay. hey what do you what sense. do you think man what are you uh are you digging the game um yeah so i'll say if the game were on xbox let's say it were an xbox exclusive i'd give it a nine nine point five it's an arbitrary number but You'll understand my point in a second. But because it's on Nintendo and the way their online works, I've got to go eight, eight flat. The game's great, Mm. but the just the online infrastructure, it's so frustrating to not get paired up with your team. You know, like we were playing the other day and I would be on Josh's team one out of every four matches. So it's that's yeah. just ridiculous to me, but the gameplay is amazing. Yeah, the matchmaking is insanely bizarre. Yeah, you can be in the same understand. match with your buddy, but you're not guaranteed to be on the same team. Yeah, and uh, it's weird. Even if you bring yeah. four people, those you're gonna get split up into a random assortment of teams, and I yeah. I don't know what Nintendo was doing with that. Yeah, that's. I haven't tried ranked yet, though. Has anyone in here tried ranked? No, not yet. I don't know if on ranked it locks you in. Maybe I don't know because that would you be would weird hope rank and be split up. Yeah, yeah. there's we'll also the league out. play, and I I don't know how league play differs from ranked. Uh, the other complaints I have is I can't co-op with you when I want. It, mm. It's on a random timer, so they need to fix that. But I mean, those are not really minor things in my opinion i think they're they're big things that need to get addressed but um the game is that good that you can kind of overlook some of these yeah yeah for sure for sure uh, captain logan says league i know has teams so there you go and i mean for me for what i'm doing like streaming this game and i can just say hey um playing with viewers Right. People add me like we I think we filled a room or we were very close to uh, to filling a room with everybody that was in chat. And so it didn't matter what team you got put on because we were all just we were all just kind of playing together and and goofing around. It was uh, uh, just a little more casual and a little more fun. And maybe that's why they do that. Maybe they maybe maybe their thinking is like, hey, this is a little more like uh, a little more like a couch couch. Uh, competitive, I guess. I don't know. I can't really say co-op because you're 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 going against each other. But um, golden eye, golden eye. Yeah, it's a little got that little. And I don't have you. So I don't know. This is it's a weird game to say spoilers for, I guess. But I I won't spoil anything. Mm. But I'll say this: if you beat the the single player game, um, the gun that you unlock, super cool looking. Super cool. Looking. Have you beat the so, single player yet? No, I haven't even. I like. I, it took me forever to figure out how to even play the single player. I was like, uh, I have to shoot a manhole cover. Like, it took me forever to figure that out. I'm shooting all the balloons in that area, and I'm like, okay, well, this is great. Like, I see these manhole <laughs> covers or whatever that I'm like, well, that's cool. Nothing says shoot me or anything like that. So I was like, I even posted. I felt on our like Discord. I played the single player and i don't remember shooting a manhole cover so oh okay i know what you're talking about the little uh, where you enter the you areas the right? other island or mm-hmm. whatever. Y- okay yeah hey, so yeah. i was like what is happening but uh if if you played splatoon one uh, the single player is very familiar in fact there were parts that i was playing and i'm like did they just reskin this i feel like i've done this section before um but the Best part, in my opinion, just like with Splatoon 1, was the bosses. The, uh, Splatoon and Splatoon 2 has some very, very unique, very Nintendo, very exciting bosses. Um, one of them, I, I won't say which one, but one of them makes a return, but in a completely fresh new way and where you're like, oh, okay, that's cool. you know. So it's not like, oh, great, this guy again. Oh, let's just do the same exact mechanic. Nope, totally new mechanics. Uh, totally new kind of attitude to him so um i i'm only on like the third maybe fourth section of the single player and i'm liking it so far cool cool yeah i mean look the graphics i think are great i think it looks good i love the way the ink looks the way it just kind of it it looks like it has some weight to it and the way it just kind of the single player and look at the ink oh is it (laughs) 
Is it, is it better in the single player? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. I, I, All right. I played the single player. I don't remember it making me make that sound this guy, out of my man. mouth. Crazy. I, uh... you, you playing it in 4K? <laughs> Two feet away? Uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, well, maybe that's the problem. <laughs> no, no, no. I have a 1080p. No, the, the ink, um, is, it is... They do the typical, you know, video game single players better looking than multiplayer right. thing. So, um, yeah, that there's a difference to the ink. I wish the ink that was in the single player was in the multiplayer. Hmm. So yeah, I'm loving the way it looks. The only time I played single player has been on the go. So maybe that's why I didn't see uh, you know, I didn't really I couldn't it was a little tougher to compare. But um I, everything everything about this game I'm liking. It's like it's got the Nintendo charm to a shooter. You you know, the main I I love getting kills in the game. I think it's very satisfying, but like I also love kind of just like sneaking behind the other team and just covering a bunch of ground. And the main thing I've played is Turf War. So I haven't even really like dug into this thing. So I I wouldn't even begin to give it a uh, a number, but so far I'm really liking what I'm playing. Oh, I'm giving it a number. It's the best shooter of the year. Yeah, 2017. <laughs> See you later, Call of Duty. We don't want you. <laughs> I will say this though. Um, like I mean, as I've said, I I love this game. I loved the first one. Um, if if you were looking for a 100% new experience, this is not the game that's going to give it to you. Um, Josh and I have talked. Is any other sequel? Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, no. We we've talked about. Um, how the switch is insanely more popular than the wii u and we feel that nintendo knows this and this is their chance to get some of their uh i guess more exciting um titles that that they really like too like for example we're getting mario kart 8 deluxe uh well we're we already got it uh we're getting poke and tournament dx um we got splatoon 2 those games, very minor tweaks compared to their Wii U counterparts. But the install base is now huge compared to what it was. So this is their chance to kind of like almost reissue the game to a lot bigger audience. And, you know, the people that didn't have a Wii U probably are getting this game and going like, oh, this is amazing, you know? And it's like, yeah, it was amazing before too, dude. Um, but we did get some new maps with this one. Uh I will say this as a as a negative, it's it does feel like okay, this is a sixty dollar DLC. Mm-hmm. Um, but for this, I don't mind. I also didn't mind with Mario Kart. I have a feeling I'm not gonna mind it with Pokemon Tournament because they do they look slightly better visually just because of the little graphical bump, and I'm getting kind of like more of what I like. Yeah, Pokemon, you're gonna be paying like <laughs> thirty bucks for each character because you're getting two new characters, right? <laughs> Yeah, kind of. Is that the, the, I'm really hoping. I think you told me. I think you confirmed that the controllers work. Yes. Yeah, okay. docked anyway. Because if they do... Okay, well, who plays handheld? <laughs> Some people. Uh, okay. Um, but no, I I have those controllers, and I love those controllers so much. Um, I felt like the difference between the U, Wii U and the controller was night and day. Like, I couldn't pull off moves for some reason. And whether it was placebo effect or not, the controller, suddenly I can pull them off, so... Who knows that's cool that's cool well it sounds like we're all uh we're all aboard the hype train for splatoon 2 i think it's going to uh keep us busy for a while i mean it it, it kept me from playing the destiny 2 beta which is something <laughs> because uh, that's impressive um kept me from installing it yeah and the, i mean here's the thing i actually did a bunch of like outdoor things this last weekend so i was out what? on the water like looking for real squid didn't find any though um mm. But uh, but the free time I had was all was pretty much all Splatoon too. So really really stoked for that game. Since we are going on vacation, I'm gonna be that's when I'm gonna dig into the single player because we don't even have Wi-Fi where we're going. It's base. It's almost like real camping. Almost what? It's not quite, but mm. without Wi-Fi, it's camping, right? So is there a like Starbucks abuse. within a ten mile radius? Is there what? <laughs> is there a Starbucks within a ten mile radius? No, no. Oh, no, it's no, literally it's at the base of a mountain, basically. So or a mountain pass. So you know, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. I I love my favorite part about going on this trip. We do it every year, is we all get up early, 
relatively early. And there's a massive deck on the second story. And we go and sit on that deck and we pretty much all of us pull out DSs and play like like Animal Crossing. Well, now the Switch will be there. So my son's like all stoked to finish Zelda, you know. He's like, I'm mm-hmm. waiting until the cabin to finish it. That's what he told me a couple months ago. So, um, so yeah. An excellent game. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So <laughs> I'm scared to bring this one up, guys. I don't even want to know what Dustin is going to say about this next thing. Um, hey, what do you think about the SNES huh. Mini being able to be pre-ordered from Walmart? <laughs> Go ahead. Well, since I was ten minutes late, I think it's terrible, and I hate it. And it, what a dumb idea. No, uh, I, I'm fine with it. I personally, I would wait for um Amazon or something, just because I don't like paying for it before it ships. But um. No, I, uh, I, I feel like it was an error, though. I mean, uh, they, how can they possibly have known how much they're getting already? I don't think Nintendo released that to anybody. Yeah, from my understanding, um, one of our, one of the regulars in the stream was, uh, was chatting with a Nintendo rep, and they said Nintendo is not very happy with, uh, with Walmart. So I don't know how, like, you know. Again, that's just that's just what we're hearing, so it's not yeah. like a an absolutely confirmed thing. Um, but I guess, uh, yeah, I guess they're not too happy about it. So, well, what can they do? It's Walmart. I mean, the only right. company bigger than Nintendo is Walmart. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, but I was able to get one. It didn't get canceled, so I was happy about that. I'm still gonna go camp for one. Because honestly, I'd like to be able to get a couple to do some giveaways with. Because I think it would be it'd be awesome. So um, that's uh, that's really what I'd like to be able to do. Um, hopefully, get them from the scalper. Like get them before the scalpers do. That's really what I'd like to do. Because man, they they drive me crazy. They drive me yeah. crazy. Oh, speaking of, and uh, Captain Logan's going to be writing an article about it too. Um, Think Geek, all of a sudden had a whole bunch of NES classics that oh. they. Uh, that they sold with uh, um, as a bundle ranging from $140 to $220. So kind of bundle. That's a, I don't, I'm guessing t-shirts and decorations. I didn't go in and look these up, but uh, you know, it's uh, interesting that think geek is owned by GameStop and they magically got these extra NES classics out of nowhere. Did they just sit on them the whole time? We just we were at the docks and we opened this Connex and oh my yeah. gosh, look, there's a whole pallet full. Let's yeah. Yeah, they decided to bid on one of those uh one of those Connexes Josh has been trying to find games out of. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So uh Captain Logan saying they sold them with lights, backpacks, Mega Man helmets. Trash. Um, no comment from either company, you know. So uh, it's just a, it's a not, it's not cool. Super Nintendo, no. what's up, dude? Welcome. Um, it's just not cool. So that's unfortunate that that went down. They all sold out though, because I mean, why not? If, at least if you're going to spend 140, you're getting extra stuff with it. But I mean, at that point, the retailers become a scalper, and so it's it's not cool. But uh, Destin, we didn't get to hear about your thoughts <laughs> from the SNES mini <laughs> pre-order debacle of 2017. So. Uh, Go go ahead. Uh, this is like <laughs> Walmart trying to outdo Nintendo, like for like boneheaded moves of the year. It's I mean it's bad enough the thing. You, you know I'm sure there's people that have those you know those uh, notifications. You know as soon as it goes live, it's like you go and pre-order and um you know we talked about the scalpers like the entire classic situation you know and i refer to the nes classic and now this snes classic and i'm sure um the exact same thing is going to happen for the n64 classic it the whole thing like just leaves a giant bad taste in my mouth like um no matter how it, it's almost like you know, you could go like, oh, who is this system for? You know, is is this for uh, 
little little Johnny who's who's six years old. No, he's got no nostalgia for this thing. Why does he want it? He wants Call of Duty Four or not Four, Call of Duty and PS Four, you know. Um, and then you got, you know, uh, let's say people like Josh or Hate or myself, and it's like we were around when those systems were kind of like, you know, what we grew up on. It's like, yeah, I would love to have one. Oh, they're super hard to find, or I'm at work. Oh, I can't get it. Oh, maybe I can find it online. Oh, three hundred dollars? Hell no, I'm not buying that. You know? Or you got maybe someone like Josh who's like, oh, I got little girls, little boys. I want to share this with them as part of my childhood. You know? Oh, I can't do that though because I got to work. You know, thirty graveyard shifts to afford the thing now. So now little Susie misses out because she can't share something with her dad. You know? Thanks scalpers. Thanks Nintendo for not putting out enough product. <laughs> Because we didn't know this would sell. No, they knew it would sell. But I swear, I think Nintendo, like, you always hear people talk about how, like, oh, I don't want to bump get bumped into the next tax bracket. I'm glad I didn't work the overtime. I feel like Nintendo is like, we don't want to get bumped in the next tax bracket. What's the minimum amount of product that we can sell without making too much money? Oh, that much? Okay. Yeah, put out five of them. All right. Uh, for all of you I, that... I, are- I, I changed my opinion. I'm going to side with Destin on after that. Um, well, it's Nintendo doing Nintendo, and now Walmart's like, we want a Nintendo too. Oh my goodness! Walmart uh, being Walmart, I guess that's the new hashtag. So, if you guys are feeling dehydrated <laughs> from all of that salt just now, feel free to get a glass. Of, pause this. Get a glass of water. Uh, come back. We'll. Uh, and Logan knows what's up. Poor Susie. Poor little Susie. <laughs> Right. So, I mean, here's the thing. The NES Classic, I know it was for for a lot of people, even if they were gamers, some are gamers, some are not. They just wanted to, they may have had real young kids that are like, hey, this is what I want to start them on. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, my boys started with, um, they started with some more like they, the N64 and, and the GameCube. But as soon as they were able to figure out uh, shooters, I mean, they were playing Halo with me. Right. And it's, yeah. it's probably my bad. I should have kept them on the more of the Mario th- thing, but I mean, you know, my son, the, my oldest is a, is a baller at call of duty now. And, uh, and the other one's just dominating destiny. So, I mean, it's, uh, they enjoy it. It's, it's fine. But, but as far as who it's for, I mean, hopefully it's for everybody and hopefully there's enough for everybody. Cause, uh, even my sister, who's like, she could care less about gaming. She's like, oh, I really, she, she, she heard about the NES classic. She's like, oh, I want that. She goes, oh, it's just Nintendo. It's not Super Nintendo. I was like, no, it's not Super Nintendo. She's like, oh, I want Super Nintendo. That's because she's 10 years younger than me. Uh-huh. So she's like, Super Nintendo is what she remembers playing. Donkey Kong Country and that kind of stuff. So this, yeah. this is for her. This, and, you know, and she's got four boys all under the age of six or they're, they're six and under now. So, um, she, you know, she's, she's excited for that. At least this one comes with two controllers. You know, I just, I hope it's easy for people to find. That's the, that's, that's the bottom line. But, um, Destin, you mentioned there is, um, rumor. Okay. Rumor that the N64 mini may end up being a, a possibility. So, um, I can't imagine why not. Yeah. At this point, they're seeing how, how stoked people are for all this stuff. And I mean, <laughs> I'm just, I don't know. How are they going to package these? Is there going to be four controllers in that package? Is there going to be two? Is there going to be like, are we going to get Could that crazy that controller mini with a short joystick? <laughs> if they actually make the controller smaller. Trying to play with that. Oh my gosh. I can't, I mean. Oh, that's right. The controllers are full size, huh? I'm not buying it. <laughs> no. Yeah, they are full size. Now. Uh, it's going to come with one. Didn't the original 6.4 launch with just one? I think it just came with one. Yeah. Yeah. From, so it'll be. The SNES came with two, so you're getting two in that bundle. And then the uh, N64 will just be the one boomerang controller. Oh, man. I hope they put it. Because the NES Classic just had one. But uh, they they got it right with the SNES. Just do two. Because I don't know if you guys have looked, but on eBay, the NES Classic controller in the box, the, the, the uh, North American one is $300. Mm-hmm. 300 bucks for just the controller in the box. I'm like, are you kidding me? So I'm still trying to get just the UK one. I think I'm going to be able to get one for like 30, just so I have two actual Nintendo branded controllers for that thing. Cause right now I'm rocking one from Best Buy. That's like white and the buttons feel weird. It drives me crazy. That's <sighs> only for player two. That's not your problem. 
That's right. Yeah, that's that's, right. that's reminiscent of when you're a kid, anyways. You know, where it's yeah, like you, you didn't have like, the second friend. official one. Mm-hmm. You give the you kid give the, the crappy you know, Nico. Right. Yeah, kid next door gets the translucent green one. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, N64 Classic might end up being a thing. There was some some uh, I don't know. Uh, something was filed somewhere with somebody that's hinting at it. So hopefully that's the case. I would love to see that and be uh, just be nice to be able to stream a lot of those 64 games. But the first thing super Nintendo said was, Mm. well, all the good games won't make it onto the system. And that's, I mean, it's not entirely true, but there are an awful lot of good games on the 64 that will be lost to licensing. There will be no golden eye. Be very whoa, unlikely. Anyway. Whoa, whoa, whoa! They can pay to have a temporary license. It can be done. <laughs> it, it it can be done. It can be. But why do you gotta ruin dreams, Josh? If know, if they don't have Goldeneye on there, I'm coming for you. you this is your doing. For me. <laughs> you wished it into existence. I did not wish it. I wish it was there. I love Goldeneye. So the other thing I just thought about too is uh, so these these mini consoles they're they're pretty small. Um. And the, the NES runs NES games, which have been, you know, ported and modded. And, um, you know, each file is like, what, six kilobytes or something. They're, they're super tiny. Uh, same thing with the SNES games. They're not like massive games. But when you start jumping into the, uh, the 64 and, you know, if we're eventually going to get a, a mini GameCube classic. Stop. Those games. Games start getting harder to emulate, and you start needing like more powerful hardware. Um, I'm just wondering if they'll get to a point where can you even, you know, technically put the game on this tiny little piece of machinery? Yeah, it's a good question. It's a good. Question. I wonder if, because I mean, you know, these up these smaller, these 16 bit games and 8 bit games, you know, that's you know, you could. You have them on your phone, you know. You could have like a thousand on your phone; wouldn't take up any memory at all. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know. You've got. I think up to the sixty-four is probably fine, but I know you've run into issues even running certain games on on your like high-end PC when you. I like, have. They're yeah. They're insanely um, CPU dependent. Yeah. And I have a. Uh, I have an i7 that I have overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz and it still can't run um, it can't run Rogue Squadron like at 60 frames per second (laughs) so I know that game is a fluke we've talked about it it's like um, that's a special game it and that's the thing like that game it's sequel uh, like one other game run kind of you know subpar every other game though like <laughs> i can run it like uh beyond 4k at like 120 frames per second you know and it's it's like the, my cpu is running at two percent so um it's just certain games but who knows if we would even get those games because like you said licensing i don't i i don't want this to sound horrible but i don't think the gamecube can count as a classic. It's probably my favorite Nintendo system, or it's definitely close to. But mm-hmm. I don't think it was very well received. It didn't. It didn't compete well with the Xbox and the PS2. Yeah, I hear you. Um, it's kind of. It's almost like you know, like the classic car thing. It's like where do classic cars drop off? Like, is it a moving scale? Just because you get older, does it become a classic? Um, like in my opinion, personally, like a classic car is like something like even in the seventies is a gray area, you know, but just because when we hit like the year 2100, that doesn't mean suddenly like a 1991 Ford Ranger is going to become a classic, you know, so, I think so I that was just from a now. different, <laughs> yeah, you know, now while it's re- retained its value. Um, no. So I honestly, like, I, I totally hear what you're saying. Um, I, I think, obviously, the, the the game, the original NES classic, SNES classic, um, even the 64, I might say, is in that gray area. And then GameCube, I yeah, I don't think I would consider the GameCube a, a, a classic console. Yeah. Maybe not even a retro console. Probably not. 
Yeah, I don't think maybe maybe that jump to 3D is where that line is. I don't care what they call it as long as it comes out. <laughs> Honestly, I don't care if they call it classic or not. Just put the thing out. That's what I'm talking about. So uh, anyway, who knows what's going to go on with the SNES Mini. I say, you know, go go camp for it. Make sure you get one. That's going to be your best bet. Get a buddy system going. Maybe you can get pick up a couple and have a buddy that can pick up a couple or whatever. You know, whatever. Just uh, do your best. Do your best. Do not Do not lose heart. Because there's supposed to be a lot more of them, according to Nintendo. Hopefully, they're not lying. So, um, two more, two <laughs> more than yeah, and hopefully uh, GameStop doesn't give them all the Think Geek. <sighs> so, um, some news dropped today. Lost Sphere. I think it was today. It may have been yesterday. Um, from Square Enix. It's coming out January, uh, January 2018. It is very from some from some of the tweets I saw. People were like, oh my gosh, this is the Chrono Trigger sequel that I've always wanted. So it's the way the way this game kind of plays like that, I guess. I've never played Chrono Trigger. Sorry, I know. I know. Um, you can send your hate mail or your hate tweets <laughs> to me. Um, but I watched a video right before we started. Game looks really cool. So I do, I do recommend checking, uh, checking it out. And uh, we'll probably be talking about it more because... I don't know. Just looking at it, I'm like, I want to play a game like this. I want to. Uh, I want to. I want to give it a shot. I want to. I want to lose myself in a game like that. And I don't typically do that. You know, there's some DS games like Strangely, uh, uh, Strangely Default. I think is what. I think that's the name of it. Now it kind of my, my mind kind of went blank, but um, that I hear are just really, really great. But they're not typically games I go for. So I want to. I want to start expanding my horizons a little bit. And, uh, and just keep collecting more games that I won't finish, you know? So, um, mm. that's, uh, yeah. Either of you guys see anything about this game? Lost Sphere? No, no, no. Yeah, I haven't. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, l- check it out. It looks, it looks really interesting. It looks like it might have a pretty cool story. And so, um, definitely check it out. Um, <laughs> here's GameStop again, not a sponsor. If you pre-order Metroid with GameStop, you can get a Samus keychain. That's what you always wanted. Literally, it looks like it's made out of fuse beads. So, you know, if that's your thing, go uh, go get Metroid from from GameStop. Yeah. I don't know. Even me as a collector, I'm kind of like, I don't know that I really care about that. So, but that's me. How do you guys feel about that? Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't want a keychain, but... <laughs> You're going to pre-order it anyways, so I, I guess getting something is that little incentive to go through X vendor. So, yeah. you know, why would I go to Target uh, when I can get a keychain from GameStop? Well, yeah, I got a, I have my uh, Mario Kart Rubik's Cube from Target. That's where I bought yeah. Mario Kart, right? And they price and matched. Super you glad you have that, that thing down. They price matched with uh, Amazon, so I got the good deal too, right? But see, that's the thing. The incentive for me is Best Buy is like 20% less than GameStop. So that's where I'm going to go. Amazon's 20% less. Unless they step up their pre-order game. If it was something better than a keychain, GameStop, if you're listening, you might get customers back. I, Ooh, like if it was like an exclusive level, that's never made anyone angry. Don't do that. Stop. Oh, no, oh my gosh, like I'm that, editing that like, out. You know, what if, what if Josh could get a cool Metroid hat? You know, like a trucker hat, he'd be all over it. He'd be like, "All right, I'm I'm going to GameStop for sure." That's true. Damn, <laughs> that would work. Hope they're not listening. Or like a Samus nude code. No, oh, stop, stop. <laughs> no, no. Oh wait, rumor, rumor. Apparently, that was never a thing. Yeah, unconfirmed. <laughs> but yeah. it could be if you pre-order GameStop today. No, stop, stop. <laughs> um, so, other games that were announced. You're gonna love this. I can't wait to hear Destinot's response. <laughs> Rayman Legends coming out September 12th. Rayman. That and Skyrim are like <laughs> the cockroach of gaming. Like How old is Rayman Legends? Uh, <laughs> um, it came out, I think, on the 360. I, <laughs> dude, I don't know. I know I got it for free on my Xbox, and I know it's on the Wii U. Like. I don't know. I don't know. But hey, 
hopefully this game is for somebody, right? And I've never, even though I have it on my Xbox, never played it. So maybe, you know, maybe this will be the, maybe getting it on the Switch will be what I need. And and maybe some of the up upgrades or whatever, you know, the, 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 the updates to it will be worth a pickup. I don't know. <laughs> it's, I mean, the Switch I, is literally a port machine at this point. We, the, yeah. the only like new game is ARMS. Yeah. And even Splatoon, like it's, uh, yes, it is a sequel. It's very close to Splatoon. But it's, One. it's, very, yeah, it's very similar to the first game. So next, next month we're getting uh, Mario X Rabbids, which looks entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that, and, and I'm just talking about Nintendo first party games, of course, but, uh, um, cause you know, but even, I mean, look, Puyo Puyo Tetris is a, <laughs> is a port i'm just looking at my the stack of games right here street fighter that's definitely a port um cave story plus we use playable somewhere else beforehand so it's yeah. uh it's interesting but you know it's, one two switch you forgot the best game yeah oh yeah that was original yeah super og yeah <laughs> yeah for sure for sure so anyway that's uh that's coming. Raymond Legends. Um, so guys, I kind of have a fun question. For those of you in chat, I want you guys to answer this too. But what we're gonna this is our little retro section here. What's your favorite NES game that was also an arcade game? So the list is quite extensive, actually. It's very, very long. And uh, and you don't have to pick just one. We can we can we can chat about a couple of them, but um, you know, and you guys in the chat, if you have uh, if you have some answers too, go ahead and uh, go ahead and let us know your favorite NES game that NES or any Nintendo game. No, let's go NES for this one. Uh, so I'll, uh, I'll 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 pull up the list here and read you a few, and then you can uh, um, you'll be able to. Uh, I already have my two. You already have. Okay, go for it while I'm uh, while I'm pulling these up. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game, and Gauntlet. Gauntlet. Ooh, Gauntlet. Yeah. yeah Red I loved, Wizard needs food. Yeah, Green Elf shot the food. <laughs> I, I loved that one because, <laughs> you know, in the arcade, it was just quarter after quarter, but I think it was select or something on the NES, so you could just pump infinite quarters. It's so good. Yeah, it's kind of fun. My, I, my uncle, who I talk about a lot on this show, uh, um, at least in the earlier episodes, because he's the one that got me into gaming when I was really young. Um, when he was in high school, he took five buddies. They all took $25. And oh. one guy just would, basically four of them would be playing and the other guy would just be pumping quarters into the machine to keep them, oh, to keep them alive. And like the arcade attendant would like come and like stand and watch and be like, guys, I've never seen this far into the game. This is awesome. And then guys, one guy's like, dude, my wrist hurts. Like come take over. So then he would take over and they would start pumping quarters for the next one, you know, so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, gauntlet's a blast. It's a blast. Every, actually, every time I go down and visit him, we end up playing it in some form, like on the 64 or something like so it's uh it's it's good stuff or the GameCube, I guess. But uh uh Desnot, do you have any come to mind or I can read you some? Um well I too was gonna select uh Turtles. Yeah. That game was just that was I, I wanna say I wanna say that was the first four player arcade cabinet that um my friends and I ever played, which is cool because it's like it was like me, my brother my buddy, his brother, it's like, you could all, you know, usually it's two player, you know, but you could play all at the same time. Um, with that dual screen, dual CRT widescreen. <laughs> yes. That was, that was just a blast. Um, so, I mean, there's that one. Um, one of my favorite NES games of all times. Um, some people may not know this, but Contra was originally arcade. Yep. And Contra arcade was actually, um, far graphically superior than the NES version. Um, it looked extremely good, and I think I think it's on the current gen consoles. It's, it's like literally called Contra Arcade. Um, I just um, saw it this week, it. and it's on. It's I have so I bought it on the 360, which is the arcade mm-hmm. version, and it's now backwards compatible on the Xbox One. 
Okay. Yeah. Which cool, should be yeah. arcade game. Um, but yeah, that one, that first time I ever played Contra was at Pizza Hut in the arcade. Um, those are the only two that come to mind right away since we're limiting it to NES. <laughs> right. Well, we'll do it with Super Nintendo too, because, uh, or Sega, you know, whatever, because I know you may have some Sega ones as well, but Sega. Um, actually, Sega has one of the best arcade games that en- ended up getting like banned from a lot of arcades because of violence. So oh, okay. it's called, uh, uh, Time Killers. Look it up sometime. It's pretty, uh, <laughs> everybody has swords. And if you like chop an arm, you know, you, your buttons are left arm, right arm, left leg, right leg, but you can, you can take limbs off. And then when you hit that button, if the limb's missing, it just squirts blood out of that <laughs> limb. <laughs> so that's Sega. Yeah, that was definitely Sega. I mean, you got games like, um, well, Q- Brophy Boy from the chat here said Qbert. Prime Griffin said Mortal Kombat 4. Oh my God. These guys, I swear. Kappa. Yeah, Kappa. Um, Super the, Mario, though. Yeah, from the Play Choice 10 or whatever. Or there's the Play Choice. Mm-hmm. You can play Super. Actually, and the retro arcade that we go to, the the barcade, they have just a Super Mario Brothers machine, which is uh, which right. is pretty cool. I always see my daughter over there pumping quarters. I'm like, you know, you can play this at home for free, right? <laughs> She's like, I, don't I know, care, but not with a joystick. That's what she tells me. I'm like, I love you. So uh, She's basically telling you you need to go out and buy the NES Advantage. Yeah, pretty much for the for the NES Classic, right? Mm. Um, so you got games like Bubble Bobble One and Two, um, Bump and Jump, so Contra, good. Dig Dug, and Dig Dug Two. But I'm not sure those came to the, look. Looking through this uh, forum post, I don't think they made mm. it onto the actual NES, but they did to the family. Uh, Dig Dug. I believe it was on NES. Yeah, I'm not sure. Just based on, I'm, again, I'm just going off of what these guys are saying here because they started adding mm-hmm. some games that didn't make it. And then they're like, well, if you mean, if you mean, um, Salamander, then I guess Life Force counts. You know, like they're getting all technical because mm-hmm. they're keeping bending the rules. Yeah. Um, you got the Donkey Kong games, of course. Um, Galaga, Galaxian, Gauntlet 1 and 2, Ghosts and Goblins, Gradius, Akari Warriors, oh, yeah. Jackal, Joust. Mappy Land, Marble Madness, Millipede, Miss Pac-Man, Paperboy, Popeye. Paperboy. Paperboy had the the control, the bike controls in the arcade. <laughs> Where you can sit down on a bike. Uh, you couldn't sit oh, down, it just but it had, had the hand, It just the had handlebars. handlebars. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, you that. steer the handlebars. Yes, standing. Dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of course, punch out, but it's like a totally different punch out right mm-hmm. it's not even not even close to the same but i do want to mention i listened to uh, and i highly recommend you guys you probably most of you that listen to this probably already listened to nvc um well i know not every one of you after reading some of your reviews you may not listen <laughs> to nvc but i would recommend going back and listening to it um especially this last week's episode um even if you have to fast forward to the arcade section where they talk about like kind of the history of nintendo and arcades and like punch out was a dual screen machine you had the boxer you were fighting up on one screen and, and your character like little Mac or whatever was, was down below. So they were even doing dual screen stuff way back in the arcade, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, but yes, yeah, so, I mean, there's, you know, super C of course, section Z. I don't know if you guys, but like I played a ton of Popeye when I was a kid, I loved that game, which was kind of a donkey Kong ripoff. Right. And, and Nintendo wanted donkey kong to be popeye they did not want it like donkey kong wasn't initially going to be donkey kong they wanted it to be popeye they wanted to make popeye but they couldn't get the they couldn't get the license for it and then once they proved themselves you know here came popeye and so uh i was even looking at the the cart on uh on ebay like oh man i kind of want to get popeye on my nes so i can uh, jump back into that but it was it was a really fun game i remember in the arcade it was one i would would look for often but didn't see very often um rampage i almost for oh, oh rampage do i yeah we had i had rampage but it was the it was like you couldn't be the wolf right you could only be you lizzie only and be... george right yeah is that right mm. is that the names lizzie but that was typical that was typical of the NES ports back in the day. You know, they uh, they had to come back somewhere. Right, right. But oh, I was going to say, I can't believe I forgot about Ivan the Iron Man Stewart's off-road racing. <laughs> <laughs> in the arcade, you had those wheels where you could like whip them around and do like almost like a U-turn. Oh, dude. Uh, you couldn't do that on the NES, but uh, yeah, like that game, and I think it was a Tengen or 
however you pronounce it, had pole position. Yep. Oh, yeah. Brown, was... brown, brown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sneaky Sniper said he spent too much time um, on Dig Dug and Galaga. Love it. Love it. Um, Spy Hunter was another one. Russian mm-hmm. Attack. Um, Russian Attack. Bad Dudes. Burnia. Burger Time. Defender 2. Gyrus. I never POW. Saw, I never. Yeah, they have that a little lower. So I mean, there's there's a lot of games. I didn't. I didn't. I kind of almost want to go. Hmm. Maybe this should be like the the my current like games. I want to like do a little mini collection right now and just go for the NES games that are also arcade games. Because um, I have a feeling a lot of them are going to kind of just be uh, like commons, so they wouldn't be wouldn't be too much. But uh, no. Arknoid, uh, 1942 and 1943. Also, mm-hmm. really great games. Somebody here said Double Dribble. I don't remember that being in uh, in the arcade, but those might have um, been arcade games. Yeah, RBI Baseball was a game I played mm-hmm. a ton. My dad and I would play so much RBI Baseball, whether it be at home or uh, um, or in the arcade. But uh, um, I got a few. I'm going to read from our Discord guys, and if you want to get in on the conversation with us, like Twitter is a great place, but you only got 140 characters. Come in hmm. to our Discord. Um, there'll be a link in the show notes, which will be the lootcave.com slash NPC 28. And there you can get into the discord and, and come and hang out with us. There's, there's, it's growing like we're, it's, it's growing daily. So, um, come be, a, be a part of the conversation. I ask a lot of the questions for the show there. So, so come hang out with us. I think you can go to the lootcave.com slash NPC discord. Actually, it'll take you right directly to it. Um, but it's no longer just the Nintendo Powercast Discord. It's the N64 Josh Discord. It's because we talk about more than just uh, Nintendo now. So um, let's see. JC Jesse says, for me, it's always been Spy Hunter. I grew up on a, in a beach community with an arcade on the boardwalk about 100 feet from my house. And that was always my go-to game. So Spy Hunter is a good one for sure. Um, uh, Captain Logan said... Um, I only played them on the NES, but Bubble Bobble and Galaga are my favorites. So both, uh, both, both great games for sure. Um, and then I Henny says TMNT for sure. Um, it's the first game I remember playing at a large arcade, not just a random one off arcade game in a restaurant. Um, my brother and I played that game for hours once we got it on NES a few years later. And I've mentioned it before on the show, like that's the one game I could play finish start over finish start over like over and over again like i just i loved that game so um yeah so let's see what last thing here um i can't remember exactly this is from our chat here i can't remember exactly i think it was like a namco classic but it came out on the game boy advance later yeah the namco museum which is also coming to the switch um it had dig dug galaga pac-man pole position and something else and i remember playing all those games in the arcades before it was ported over to the platforms yeah so so many great games and i mean i remember times too as a kid like it was like yes i'm gonna get rampage home right and you're like Mm. that wasn't too bad of a port but then there was other games that you were like i mean especially if you like if you played uh like atari like the atari (laughs) pac-man (laughs) <laughs> where like his like he moved completely different than he did in the arcade. It wasn't even close to the same. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but then on the NES, it was it was a really good port. So there were definitely times that you were like, man, this is not nearly as good. But uh anyway, hey, we're right at that hour mark. Um so Destina, where can we find you on the interwebs? You guys can find me on Twitter at Destina TLC. Um just kind of, I'm kind of lurking twit Twitter right now. So much going on. I mean, between uh, the uh, between like the games we cover on this show, the Nintendo games, and even Destiny, which we cover on our other show. Um, yeah, there's a lot. I've been following a lot of the artists too. If you guys don't know who Young Khan is, check him out. He does quality work. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. Hey, how about you, buddy? Where can we find well, you? you- you can find me right here if I get notification of what time the podcast is happening. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, I'm on here. I'm on the, the Switch. I still don't think I ever sent in my horrific friends code to the uh, the Google Docs, so I need to do that. But um, I'm on the NPC. 
Um, you can at whatever my name is at the time because I'm still trying to figure out what name won't offend the people. <laughs> uh, once we got that dialed in, I, I'm I'm available to play games and, and I'll respond to stuff. Cool. Cool. Sounds good, man. Um, you guys are going to find me on Twitter at N64Josh. You're going to find me on Twitch, um, Instagram, Facebook. I post a lot on my Instagram, a lot of uh, pictures of like the Amiibo and Nintendo Power covers and just different. It's all gaming stuff, especially Nintendo stuff. So, um, I, I, you know, check that out. And uh, guys, remember, we do this show live Tuesday nights. The time might be changing. It may be getting a little earlier. So um, next week we're off because I'm on vacation. Destinot will be streaming at some point on Tuesday on this channel. So if you have notifications turned on, you'll know exactly when he goes live and it's just going to be kind of a, a, a Q and a he might play games. He might just uh, sit and chat about whatever. So um, come hang out with him and uh, you know, just, just prepare yourselves for the salt. And <laughs> uh, um, remember if you want to get yourself a free audiobook from audible, you can go to audibletrial.com slash NPC. And, uh, yeah, if you got time, leave us a review on iTunes. We thank everybody that's been doing that. Like I've, I've been seeing them and I, I really, I read every one of them and I really, really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, you guys are going to help us get, uh, get into that top 200 on iTunes. That's really the goal. So we've hit it once. Now we got to get back there again. So thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for being here with us live and, uh, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you in two weeks. See you later. <laughs>